this planet, there's a place where there are no houses, no big buildings, no police, no wages or salaries. The residents do not curse the authorities or give hell to new Russian oligarchs. In fact, they do not curse anybody. The place I'm talking about is located right in the middle of our country on the Yenisei River in Siberia. People here rely only on themselves and expect performance only from themselves. people. The Yenisei near Bakhta usually ices up in the middle of November. For a couple of weeks after that, it may move a hundred meters or so when there's a thaw, but after that, the hard frosts bring it to a standstill. The river comes to a standstill, the ice is not thick, and the Bakhta residents cast nets. They don't use ice augers on Yenisei. During the winter, the ice becomes a meter and a half thick, so they use ice chisels. The main hole must be big enough to allow the net to be dropped and checked for fish. It takes two people to cast a net in freezing weather. One man unrolls it into the hole. And the other pulls it into the river by rope run through the other hole. Winter. It's hard to tell the exact year when Bakhta or other settlements like it appeared on the Yenisei. A solitary wintering camp stood here long before the road for horses and the staging post. It was not founded by the Cossacks, as is commonly believed, but by peasants, the same hardy people who came here of their own free will or were exiled and managed to survive and strike root. They became the first Russian Siberians. Today the residents of Bakhta, their descendants, have one common feature. They're stubborn and enduring. For almost half the year, the cold is so hard that even the simplest chores become difficult and often dangerous. The northern man's character was steeled through constantly having to overcome diversity. There's nothing that can surprise or frighten him. He takes everything calmly. They check the nets every three or four days to remove the fish while it's alive. Here 
А свежая рыба есть свежая рыба, хоть налим, хоть как. А, лилочки, это рыба. Дальше берем. Там опять что-то идет. Налима полно. Есть сколько рыбы. Вот закрываю, чтобы не промерзло. А так в открытого стаи щелки промерзат все. The Unisa is teeming with fish. Before the Bolshevik Revolution, it was taken to the cities by horse carts. And in the Soviet times, they took it away by the plane boat. Раньше добывая рыбу, сдавали государству. А сейчас добывают. Ну я додолу, ну куда мне его? Я только собак кормлю, сам ем, собак кормлю, все. Today the most you can do is to send fish to the mainland as a gift on the helicopter that brings mail to Bakhtar once a week. The whole village is eagerly awaiting the chopper. Parcels and letters are prepared and instructions given to those who will be coming back with the next flight. One's own kin are more reliable and faster than the mail service. The chopper brings some merchandise to the local store, pensions for the old folks and wages for the lucky few who still have jobs in Buck Town. Beginning from winter, the first fur buyers arrive in Buck Town. Everybody here, young and old, are hunters. They harvest squirrels close to the village, although squirrel pelts are cheap. For many locals, selling them is the only way to make some money. The squirrel pelts are very cheap. The sable fetches the highest price, like many years ago. To catch it, you have to go far away from the villages. Deep in the Degga, there are large areas where commercial trappers work. Сейчас все специализируются на соболе, потому что белка дешевая, горностая один, два попадают. Вот вот этого горностая навряд ли примут, потому что он мелкий. Принимают только крупного сейчас горностая. И цены смешные. Крупный хороший горностай там 125 рублей. Конечно, кормилец-то основной соболь. В цене он вроде в деньгах растет, а цена денег падает же. И что я раньше мог купить на 20 рублей, сейчас я не могу купить на полторы тысячи. The general drop of fur prices has hardly affected the sable. But still one has to harvest many more of them before to sustain the family and pay all the costs. In winter, the trappers catch sables with foothold and deadfall traps. This is a deadfall trap called Kulomka. The area of Gennady Solovyov is in the western plain. Here the animals have to move about a lot in search of food. So the traps have to be put close to one another to prevent the sable getting past it. Kulomka has just one disadvantage compared with foothold. You can't move it from place to place. On all other counts, it wins hands down. 
Commercial trappers have long known that the sable, being a curious little animal, goes into the krylonka more readily. The guard stake in the trap is made of two special wooden bars that are pressed between the two poles. They are kept in this position by this twig with the bait. When the animal pulls the bait, the twig releases the wooden bars. They are jettisoned and the upper pole falls down together with the roof and the snow. Вот эта кулемочка возле избушки стоит. Каждый год она подкармливает, что-нибудь додает. Разница кулемки и капкана, вот он сыт и соболь, капкан обойдет, а кулемка с кулемкой этот номер у нее не проходит. Как бы он там ни крутился, если он приваду дернул, она его прихлопнула. Пушнинка без кровоподтеков, такой бегал, такой и попал. Гуманный способ, потому что убивает сразу. пальцем нет ни тот убийца или пособник убийцы в любого в любого человека даже тот кто там стонет и жалеет всех почему очень просто хозяин свинью держит он ее заведомо для чего держит убить убить для чего самому есть и продать а тот кто жалеет это все дело покупает у него это мясо Так что здесь круговая порука в этом деле. И охотник точно такой же, как тот же хозяин. Только он более, как тебе сказать, честнее. Ну, не то, что честнее. Этот человек заведомо кормит. Я вот тоже держал скот, и у меня рука не подымалась на него. Потому что там вот тот же бык, его два года держишь. Но... Он к тебе доверяет, он к тебе подходит, ждет от тебя там какой-то ласки, подачки, а ты ему пулю в лоб. Предательство. А здесь зверь дикий, он знает, что от меня добра он, не дождется он. От человека имею в виду. Он старается убегать здесь, кто кого перехитрит, естественно. Геннадий Соловьев just couldn't bring himself to slaughter his ox. He asked a neighbor to do it for him. Spending more than three months in the wild taiga is hard and taxing. However, while most people in Bakhta were left without a livelihood, the commercial trappers stayed afloat because they could feed off the taiga forests. Trappers, once they're out in the taiga, spend most of the time at the base lodge. The roads from the other huds lead to it. Most of the equipment, the firewood and the food stocks are there. The base hut is nearly always by the riverside, where our nets are cast. The trapper's food stocks consist of grit, bread and dried bread. Sometimes, if he's lucky, he has meat, but usually he catches the fish himself. Down where Anatole Blume has his camp, the river is shallow and there's not much burbot, but there's a chance to catch a more valuable fish, Lenoc or Taimen. But mostly, they get pike. It makes food for the trapper and his dog. Trappers seldom allow their dogs indoors. The dog lives outside in a special doghouse called Katu. А это тоже от человека зависит, кто с ними, чуть ли там не с одной чашки ест, на нарах спит вместе. Но я лично не одобряю, вообще даже вот сильные морозы я никогда не запускаю. Есть катух, ну. Ну. я считаю, что только собаку кормить надо. 
вечером до отвала и утром мера, чтобы брюхо по земле не таскалось. When using footholds that you can carry around and set up in the places where the animal's footprints are, the trapper has two main concerns. To prevent them from being covered in snow and to prevent other taiga animals, mainly mice, from spoiling the valuable pelt. The mice cannot reach the sable hanging on a wood strip and the tree is a cover from the snow. The chep jerks the trapped animal up if the trap is on the ground. In the courtyard, it's covered by spruce branches against the snow. The winter days in the north are short. The cats call them a glove finger because between sunrise and sunset, a woman can sew only one finger of a fur glove. A trapper can cover about 10 kilometers of a stretch of road on which traps have been set up. Such a stretch is called putik. Every hunting lodge has several putiks. With the advent of snowmobiles, the trapper can cover a lot more distance, although not everywhere in the taiga. Usually one can catch between five and eight sables from every 10 kilometer stretch. But that's a very rough estimate. A lot depends on the weather, the sable's behavior, but most of all on the trapper's own industry and perseverance. The hunting lodge becomes cold quickly. In a couple of hours, the temperature inside is the same as outside. At the beginning, you might as well not close the door. The stove is always charged with dry firewood in advance. You need a single match to set it on fire. The iron stove only gives heat while it's on fire. It doesn't retain the heat, but it gives it away at once. That's just what the trapper who comes from the cold needs. He wants to get warm quickly. Night comes early, but the trapper still has many things to do. Skin the animals, prepare the traps to save the precious daylight. The bait in the traps is better left untouched. The hunting dog knows it to his own cost. Охотники большую ошибку делают, когда начинают бить собак за капкан. Она начинает, ну, надо их, конечно, наказывать, показывать свое неудовольствие. Но именно, что битьем собаку от капканов не отучишь, она начинает бояться самого охотника, при охотнике не лезет в капкан, но только возможность взять, может ночью уйти или так, все равно сдернет. А вот когда она начинает самого капкана бояться, тогда она уже не лазит. Учит очень просто. Ставит на них капкан, специально на собак. И чтоб она посидела в этом капкане, поняла, что это грозит большими неприятностями. А иначе будет охотник мучиться, никакого согласия с собакой не будет у него. Она будет его бояться, ночами будет уходить путики чистить, труд охотника будет пропадать. В общем, много таких нервотрепок будет. А так что, хозяина любит, капкана боится, что еще надо. Having finished his business at the base lodge, Anatoly Blume leaves it for two weeks to make a big round of all his area. This is known as making the round, that is, checking the traps near other lodges. 
Anatoly has seven more lodges. He makes three rounds during a season. The biggest amount of time and effort is taken up with what they call reopening the paths after a heavy snowfall. Several days of snowfall can change the taiga out of all recognition. Whether you go on a snowmobile or on foot, a putik only becomes usable when it has ski tracks. Moving from hut to hut, it is 200 endless plodding kilometers to complete a round. been here at the edge of his area for more than a month, ever since the fall when he was preparing the paths. Tired and cold, but he has made it. All he can think about is how to get warm. But the taiga is full of surprises, and you have to be prepared for everything. A tree has fallen on the hut, breaking the roof and the chimney. To cap it all, the hut has been raided by a bear which means that everything inside is topsy-turvy and many things have to be thrown out. Commercial trapping is not the same as game hunting. It's unlikely that an ordinary hunter has to do what the commercial trapper does all the time. And in general, few people can imagine the amount of hard work, perseverance and courage that a Siberian trapper must have. Here human capacity is stretched to its limits. This is the romantic taiga, not a living soul for hundreds of miles around, 
and nobody knows what is happening to you. The cold is like nowhere else in the world. Only someone who has experienced this can appreciate the warmth and coziness of the hunting lodge, whatever the amenities. No point in waiting for the frost to subside and in an intermediate lodge, food supplies are scarce. The best you can do is to have some tea, get warm and move on. Throughout the time that Anatoly was making the round, there was no communication with him. All that was known was that he was supposed to be back at the base where he has his radio transmitter in a couple of weeks. In the village, you can hardly hear anything because of the heat generator. A lot of wives and mothers sit and wait for the familiar call sounds from the Taiga wilderness, trying to distinguish the voice of their beloved ones in the cacophony that fills the air. An area the size of a medium European country uses the same frequency band. Nobody seems to mind these people share the same river and the same problems. Every person on the Yenisei is useful and feels part of the community. In the wintertime, only women, old folks and children stay in the village. While their husbands are in the taiga, they run the household. Starting from December, colds don't let up for weeks. You have to fire your stove four or five times a day. If the smoke rises straight from the chimneys, it's a sure sign that the temperature is approaching 40 degrees below Celsius. The air is still. To save heat, they make snowbanks around the houses, especially under the windows. That way the walls don't freeze inside. For travel, the dogs are more reliable than vehicles. Cold or no cold, you need firewood and water every day. The people in Bakhta don't dig wells. The water lies deep and is not of very good quality. They prefer to get their water from the river. But if the cold gets too hard, they go to a standpipe which is closer to home. If the temperature is minus 40 degrees, people go to fetch water on foot in order to spare the vehicles and the dogs. In severe colds, the people in Bakhta don't start doing their business until noon. If it's 45 degrees below zero in the morning, it may drop to 40 by noon. In such colds, a single degree matters, and five degrees matters a lot.
The locals are used to frosts. It makes you more brisk and agile and doesn't allow you to be fussy or to tremble. People wear warm clothing, but not such clothing that would make it difficult for them to work in. The main thing is to keep your feet warm. The broden is common Siberian homemade foot gear. A light waterproof leather heelless shoe with leather or cloth boot tops. The broden comes with strings that are straightened around the knuckle to prevent snow or water getting in. In addition to the sock, there's the felt or fur insert called pakuldok. It's also homemade. They have a special respect for everything handmade. Thrift is inherited from the peasants because they know not the price of things, but the amount of work that goes into making them. A northern community isolated from the world by the forests and the river has its own rules and values. Money is secondary. You may have a million in your pocket, but you still need an ice chisel to make a hole in the ice. You need a scoop to remove the slush from the hole, and you need a fish gaff to screw up the slippery burbot. <coughs> When they catch a robot, they hit it on the head. Otherwise, you won't open its mouth, and there's no other way you can extract the hook with your bare hands in the cold. The box with small fish used as bait is cherished as if it were a treasure chest. The bait is worth more than any currency. The live bait is caught in the fall and is used to bait burbot all through the winter. You have to check the fishing rods frequently. If you miss the time, the burbot will carry away the precious bait and all your work will have been in vain. Burbot in the Yenisei area is both a boon and a curse. It's a curse because you have to go down to the river every day in any weather, snowstorm or frost, or make holes in the ice and extract tons of broken ice from the hole with your bare hands. But on the plus side, burbot is always plentiful. <laughs> It is caught throughout the long winter, kept frozen in the cold hallway as strategic food stocks. All his life, Uncle Grisha has used dogs for trapping and fishing. 
He's used to them and he can't do without them. So much so that it's hard to say whether he feeds the dogs with the fish he catches or they feed him when they transport him to the riverside. One burbot will provide a meal for the whole family. You make fish soup from the head and tail, and the rest Granny Sarah uses to make the best fish pie in the whole of Bakhtan. People came to live in Siberia in various ways. It was a severe test for many of them. Exile is etched on memory in particular, but there were those who moved there of their own free will. They found freedom in Siberia, and once they withstood the test, they acquired a sense of strength with which they did not want to part. They stayed there for good. In Bakhtan, when they bury their dead in winter, they use chainsaws to cut the frozen soil. And they hang the discarded chains on the trees by the graveside in memory of those who died in winter. The snow keeps falling as life settles into the winter pattern. Over the new year, the trappers get ready for a short stay at home. It's still a month to go to the end of the season, but the big catching time, hunting with dogs and the early weeks on the trap paths are behind them. They choose a mild day to make the trip home, not colder than 35 degrees below. It's hard to make your way in the cold weather, especially if there is wind. In addition to the furs, Anatoly loads the sled with fish and meat. His trophies during his time in the taiga. He needs to replenish the food stock at home that run low toward the middle of winter. You can never make a dog ride in a sled. It would rather pull a sled itself. So it runs after the snowmobile for a hundred miles. Only the northern Lanka dog can make it.
Привет. Привет. Да ну брось. Ну этих он не заел. Голодные они, нет? День не ели, конечно. Не С пол одиннадцатого где-то. С пол одиннадцатого, ну. Что да? Ну. Смотри, у вас снега нифига тут нет. Все, все, побольше. Чат, Ну все. Эй. Иди сюда. Они сейчас там пор. Не, 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 пускай, пускай они сюда. After the taiga, the kapa looks bright and cheerful, and the ordinary peasant house looks spacious after the cramped hunting huts. But the most important thing is that somebody is waiting for you. It's all the more important in the north. Nothing supports the trapper so much as the family. Nothing but care for the family lends so much meaning to their difficult job. In the beginning of September he goes to the forest. In this year he went to the forest. On the 23rd of December he went to the forest. And these three months, when he doesn't have him at home, it will be a whole eternity. The only thing I was used to, it was that before we lived on the forest, he had his forest on the side of the Enisei. And there the ledger went, everything, he can't get in. And he said, I won't be with you when I will be able to come back. Потому что вот он подъезжает к дому, я даже выйти не могу. Меня вот так вот все, он должен был приехать позавчера, а его нету. Я сейчас стала спокойнее ждать. Я к этому все-таки привыкла, что вот ожидание. It's not enough to catch a sable. You also have to sell it. Игорь Агафонов and his wife Marina prepare the fur for sale together. It takes a lot of time to clean the pelt from fur tree resin. Это такая первичная чистка, а потом? Потом еще чистка будет. Потом с опилками, в барабане, со скипидаром <къем> чистится, чтобы мех играл. Встряхнул, и она должна заиграть пушнину, чтобы было видно дефекты, чтобы было видно красоту меха, чтобы она была оценена. Потому что если пушнину до конца не обработать, то много получается теряешь в оценке. Пелтс are accepted in the village library. They are judged on several criteria. The main criterion that determines the price is color. The darker the sable, the more money it fetches. There are few dark sables on the Unisei. Most are light brown. And every color has a number and a price. Они тут все шестой, наверное, седьмой цвет. Шестой, седьмой здесь. Это вот семерка, наверное. Темнее нету. In addition to the color, the size is another criterion. До 75 мелкий соболь, свыше 75 грамм это крупный соболь. У них уже цена другая уже. Next to color and size, they look at the quality of the fur. And they cut the price if there are defects. They end up determining the average price of one pelt. For the trappers, it's a benchmark that tells them what they can count on this time. On the eve of the holiday, they usually undervalue the pelts. If you wait until after the new year, you can get a higher price. Сами решайте, но кого-то устроит, кого-то не устроит. Не устрою, спеши. Ладно, пока оставлю тогда же. Все равно подниму, садим, что подъезжай еще раз. Although demand for the sable is still there, the sable fever is over, like the gold rush. The days when you can make a fast buck are over. In the village, they give you very small prices. Ну, 27 500 получается. Белками. Ну, округлей еще дальше. Нет. Много мелких, много мелочей. 27 500, 28 и все. Разбегаем. Давай еще. Trappers catch about 100 sables in an average season, and even more in good years. Some of the furs they sell in the village, even knowing they will sell them cheap. 
With the holiday season approaching, there are gifts to be bought. But they save the best pelts to take them to Krasnoyarsk, in the city they can charge much more for them. True, it's unlikely to make them rich. The trappers have to incur heavy costs, gas, transport, and the gear. And all these costs have to be covered, and what remains must sustain them for a whole year. The year of the local inhabitant is an alternation of jobs. You have to do everything on time for nature's schedule. If you don't mow enough grass in the summer, you won't have hay in the winter. The trappers are pressed the hardest. They have to be everywhere, in the village with families and in the taiga, their workplace. But they don't grumble. The food that is brought to Bakhtan winter by air is more expensive than that brought by boat during the navigation season. On helicopter, they count every kilo. Still, in spite of the price, they're sure to buy up all the fruit for the kids. After all, it's New Year. In Bakhtar, the school in winter is both a club and a concert hall, the only place where people can congregate. Most importantly, there are kids that bind people together more than any holiday. The locals are just as fond of relaxing and merrymaking as many other people, although they don't have all that many occasions. The trappers' stay with their families will be brief. The new year is only a breather in the endless string of jobs. Ahead lies another month of the taiga. Towards the end of winter, the sable fur price drops and trapping ends. Then it's a trip to the city to sell the furs and come April, for the next season. Nature has assigned a place to everyone, to beast and bird. Only man has to look for a place and a job himself. If he finds it, he finds true happiness.